Hey everyone, Laurel here, not currently in Minnesota, Zone 5A. I'm visiting my dad and stepmom down in Arizona. They're in the Tucson area, which is a Zone 9A. Um, they're also in the mountains, so thought I would wander around. I've been using my plant identifier, identifier app quite a bit to figure out what all of these plants are. I do know this tree here is an olive tree. You'll also probably notice this gorgeous blue agave. Those are all over the place here. You'll see the neighbors have saguaro, barrel cactus. I don't know what those, I love those. They look like giant Sansevieria or Sempervivum. I mean, they are absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> so cool. Neighbors over here also have a saguaro and some prickly pear, barrel cactus. We are up in the mountains. The saguaro cactus is native only to this area. Um, I think this might be an ilex, a holly. There's one in the back as well. That one looks pretty healthy. Just looked up this. It has came up as a bottle brush really super soft fuzzy leaves really pretty looks like it's about to bloom which would make sense looks like bottle brush <laughs> cute little bulldog looking at me from the golf cart cute little bottle brush blooms lantana is also hardy here that's what all of these are these do die back um, but they are coming back from winter you can take a look at this cool blue agave it's humongous. It's taller than me for sure. Pretty old. So these live their lifespan and then they'll send up a humongous bloom stalk that's absolutely gorgeous, but that means that they are going to die. Um, but they usually send up out pups. That's how they reproduce. So then the mother plant blooms and then she dies and then the pups take over. You can see a bunch of them around the base of this one. There's another smaller pup over here and another pup that's come up. This is the skeleton of an older plant that lived many years and then bloomed and died. This pup, I wonder if that's one from this plant. Pretty cool. Pretty interesting. This olive tree is so pretty. I love the structure of the trunk. And it's got these beautiful sort of white gray stems, gray green leaves with the light backside. Really gorgeous. I just looked up this one too and now I'm forgetting what what it's called. Leave a comment below if you know because I can't remember what the app said. There are a few more oleander over here. Really common screening shrubs. They get huge. But my dad likes to keep these trimmed back. In fact, I'll probably go and cut away all the dead winter die off from that one over there. They had some planters from last year that are all overgrown. I think they want to empty them out, paint the planters black, and then do snapdragons in them. But some verbena and some petunias. This one, this planter is definitely doing better than the other one. Oh, here comes UPS. We're going to pause. Okay, and we're back. Um, this one's looking a little bit rough, but still lots of living plant material down there. All you would need to do is just give it a really hard cut back, cut back all the dead, even if there's blooms at the end of some of these branches, like this one, cut the whole thing back. You'll be better off. So if your planters look like that, cut them back hard, hard. And they should reflush. This, I believe, is a laurel, I think. There aren't any laurels that I know of that are hardy in my zone in Minnesota. And then these are so cool. I love these copper. Those are pretty popular and they match their front door really well. And then these three, not looking so great. They are came up as gardenias, 
This one on the end looks a little bit better. Although it does look like maybe it's suffering from some chlorosis. Um, the leaf tissue is yellow while the veins are darker green. So it might be an iron deficiency. I know they have kind of alkaline soil down here, or high pH. So it might need some uh, chelated iron. He has been treating the orange trees back here with chelated iron. Just started that uh, because they're showing some chlorosis. So more of those oleander. I think he cut back this one pretty hard in the fall because it was it was huge. It was growing really tall and you can see they get really woody stems. There are some full big ones in way in the back of the house that You'll see in a minute. That one looks pretty good, though. Not too bad. All right. Heading to the back. So here we are in the back of my dad's house. Well, the side garden. Uh, we have an oleander. I was kind of trimming on that today, all the dead stuff. I just left a pile right there. Um, there's some citrus trees here. There's some oranges and a grapefruit. My dad has an orange tree. They're all budded up. You can see there's one grapefruit. One early one right there on the neighbor's side. And this is an orange tree. Uh, theirs isn't budded up, but it may have chlorosis. You can see iron deficiency on the leaves because it's sort of yellow leaf tissue with dark green veins. That's usually a sign of iron deficiency or chlorosis. They've got this big huge rosemary here. I wish rosemary grew perennial in Minnesota. I love it. Oh, it smells so good. A lot of people have rosemary. Huge shrubs like this. A lot of them are blooming. I think my dad trimmed his back so he doesn't have any blooms right now. And then they do have, so this is, I have to have been using my plant app to look all this stuff up. This is an abelia. And you can see it's been trimmed quite a lot. I think what happens is, you know, you use a trimmer to trim the outside. And then it just kind of forms this sheath of foliage only on the outer sphere of the plant and then it's bare branches inside because no light can get in there so I looked it up it sounds like abelia can be cut back pretty hard so I think that's what my dad is going to do he's going to give it a rejuvenation prune and cut it back really hard and I'm forgetting what this plant is called very common down here really pretty pink flowers um, I think this one isn't blooming yet because it's in some shade for a lot of the day and then there are a bunch of euonymus shrubs, too. This one needs a good trim. Um, but that's a euonymus. And salvia. We've got one salvia there. This is a lantana. My dad said they have yellow blooms. They are, of course, perennial here. This is a huge shrub rose blooms it's just full of buds you can see it's just a few couple more weeks and it's just going to be on fire there is one where you can kind of see the color it looks like kind of a hot coral coral color bloom and we have a palm tree here you can see the mountains in the background they have a beautiful view i know nothing about palm trees absolutely nothing couldn't tell you what kind that is they're not native to this climate but they grow well here. Another shrub rose. This one kind of has an aged bloom. Looks like maybe the same color. When they open up, I bet hot coral. And then we've got more of the salvia down here. Hummingbirds are all over this. We won't see hummingbirds in Minnesota for a few months yet. I feel like it's usually about late June, early July when they start really showing up. Um, I'm not sure. I think this might be a box. Yeah, this is a boxwood. Another lantana down there. This salvia is really beautiful. Really gorgeous. Hot pink blooms. Hummingbirds. Well, they were doing their hummingbird battle for the flowers this morning when I was out here eating my breakfast. 
Um, another euonymus with the serrated leaves. I love that glossy, glossy leaf too. He did a couple of planters this year. Last year when I was visiting, we went and picked up some bacopa as a trailer and it did so well that they planted it again this year. It did, they got a hard freeze over the winter, so it didn't, the stuff he planted last year didn't survive that. We have another Euonymus. And this was Snapdragons. You can see I did some trimming and just I need to brush that up, clean it up. These I think got fried out because the, uh, the they have um, uh, drippers here. And I think that was turned off for a couple days. And it just got too dry for them, but they'll sprout. I trimmed them really back. They'll sprout from the roots. I mean, I'm sure they could also, they're pretty cheap to buy, so they could do that too. I think this is another boxwood. Feels like a boxwood. Looks like a boxwood. This is an ilex or a holly, type of holly. I don't really know anything about holly. They've got a vinca growing here. And then a lantana. This one's different from the other. She said it never died back this winter like the other ones did. Really pretty red and orange and yellow blooms on this one. Pretty sure this is a boxwood too. I think these are all they feel just like it. And then these are full-size oleander. These get really, really, really big. You can see just how large they get. And in the warmer months, kind of starting now, the sun sets that direction. So it helps give them natural shade on the patio to be able to enjoy their patio. A couple more oleander over here, some small ones that just he cut back some branches so that those could get some light. Just kind of spy on the neighbor's garden, but they have some beautiful iris, purple iris blooming back there as well that I was admiring. And then this is, now I'm forgetting the name of it again, a type of rose, really common down here. Really pretty yellow blooms, and just covered in buds too. Absolutely gorgeous. I do have a couple hummingbird feeders as well. Their view is just stunning. Looking out at the golf course, there go some golfers. And down here, it's kind of natural plantings. Um, I forget what that cactus thing, tree is. There's a huge one over there. These tall spiky things, there's the neighbor has one. This one is here, but it's not doing so well. It only has a few branches that are budded up, but a few over there, those big, tall, spiky plants. Those are ocotillo plants, and they're covered in spines as well. I think they have kind of hollow branches, though. And then the trees down there are mesquite trees. There's one right over here, too. So they're budding up. They're deciduous. I believe they are native here. Um, and then there is, oh, I can't see it from here. There's another shrub, kind of ferny foliage that's native here called desert broom. There used to be one kind of up in the middle, but I wonder if that died out. Oh, there's a bunny. There's lots of wildlife down here. You'll see road runners, they're all over the place, scooting across the roads and all over the golf course. There's a barrel cactus down there too, that one's kind of tipping. Oh, there's a, is that a dead bird? Possibly a dead bird, I don't know. Uh, there are a lot of snakes. That's a drawback, so you have to be careful. You don't like ground covers here, really are not. They're a good hiding spot for rodents, um, which then brings the snakes who are coming to eat the rodents. So don't do a lot of ground covers around here. 
or some moldy bread. I think it was infected at the grocery store. And then my stepmom has a tomato as well. So yeah, beautiful day. I'll try and come out here and film another segment this evening if it's clear when the sun goes down. The mountains really turn pink. They're absolutely beautiful. You can see there is snow up on the peak up there. That's Mount Lemon. And there is a little town up there, I think, and people live up there. Probably a lot more, a lot different zone than down here. You can see um, it's kind of fun to look at all the sort of landscaping on these slopes, but there's some prickly pear type cactus. There's also another blue agave down there. More of the ocadillo. Really pretty. Some of the neighbors have, well, there's a, um, I want to say pheasant, but I think it's a partridge. Those are all over the place, too. Darn, I'm bummed there aren't any roadrunners out today because they're so fun to watch them scoot across. Um, yeah, big, big, huge euphorbia. Just a lot of cool plants. Very different, and I really know nothing about this climate gardening, but I've been using my plant identifier app quite a bit to learn about these different plants, so... So I will leave it at that. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Please subscribe. Okay, so I had to look up on my plant app again. This is a Lady Banks rose. Um, I also read that there is a specimen that's almost 200 years old in uh, was it San Antonio, Texas. That is... Um, massive like a 12 foot diameter trunk so they get pretty big they are thornless really beautiful and then I do just want to show spin around hopefully that wasn't too fast just the mountains in the evening with the sun going down it looks so pretty out here And I misspoke in my previous video or segment. They're not partridges that are all over the place. They are quail. That's what I was thinking of, but I don't know. My brain went to partridge, so it's quail that are all over the place. And then there was a clip of a road runner that came up. I didn't see too many of them today, but few people out on the golf course they just kind of go out and play a few holes in the evening it's open to I don't know what time it opens where you can take your golf cart out or just walk in the evening yeah really beautiful weather has been nice nicer than early April in the upper Midwest anyway So anyway, I'll leave you with that.